Can we always skip this part? No, 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 we have to be careful. Okay. Oh, hello. I am. Hey, Hi. Chester. Hello. All right, so, Payam. Yes. I need to learn some contour integral. I don't know what's going on. No problem. I can teach you that. Okay, go. So let's. Okay, this. Absolutely seems... no problem. Right on the spot. Huh? Okay, this seems very silly, but let's calculate. Oh no, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of one over x squared plus one dx. Okay. And of course you can say, oh, it's arctangent of infinity minus arctangent of minus infinity, which I think gives you pi. But let's see how we can do this using complex analysis. Okay. Okay. And the goal is, instead of integrating this function, let's integrate the function z squared plus 1. Why? Because here we're dealing it on the real line. Okay. But if you do z1 over z squared plus 1, you do it on all of the complex plane. Okay. And it turns out there's a theorem that tells you it's actually very easy to calculate that integral. Okay. All right. Now, um, let's see. So what we want to do, we want to calculate this integral 1 over z squared plus 1 dz. What's a c, oh, by the way? Sorry. Uh, c is a curve which I'll talk about. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No problem, no problem. Uh, and the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna integrate it over a key, like a, a semicircle. Okay. So kind of like this, this movement you see a lot. Right? Like the semicircle, okay. And the circle is from minus r to r, and just this is circle centered at zero and radius r. Okay. Okay, then, on the one hand, notice this integral is like this curve itself is made out of two pieces. One which is C1 yes. and the other one which is C2. Okay. Okay. So this integral is equal by linearity to the integral over C1 of z squared plus 1 dz plus the integral of C2 over C2 of 1 over z squared plus 1 dz. Okay. okay. And to, and the point is, we'll evaluate those two integrals and we'll also evaluate this integral in a completely different way. Okay. okay. Now, what is C1? So it turns out it's very easy to parameterize C1. Namely, let gamma t just be t, where t goes from minus r to r. So that will keep us a straight line. Yes. Okay. So it's literally a parametrization of this. And the point is, once you have a parametrization, it's very easy to calculate an integral. Because then the formula is, it's the integral from your parameters, minus r to r, okay. of 1 over gamma t squared plus 1, gamma prime of t dt. But here, gamma t is very easy. It's just t, uh -huh. right? So this becomes the integral from minus r to r of 1 over t squared plus 1. Uh -huh. Gamma prime is 1. So you have this dt. Uh -huh. And notice, as r goes to infinity, uh -huh. basically, if you blow up this whole circle, you'll get that this is from integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over t squared plus 1 dt. And that's the same as the original, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, okay. no, no. The well, same, same as this original. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is cool because we're going from complex numbers to real numbers. Okay. Okay. And now, let's evaluate this integral just by showing that this is very small. Hold on. Yeah. What's that theorem from here to here? That's the definition. Okay. You just yeah. say, okay. Right, right. But you, yeah, exactly. The definition of a contour integral is just oh, you parameterize yeah, and you it and you get this. Okay. Yeah. What's interesting is it's independent kind of the parametrization. Okay. And that's just by u substitution. Yeah. So the um, is it is it gamma gamma prime t? Is that what you said? Yes. Gamma prime t. That's simply from when you like do the simple substitution of when you when you take the differentiation of it. You can think of it this way, but it's literally just differentiate your parametrization. Okay. Right, because this is a real number, you just find a derivative of this. But you're completely right. You can think of this, in fact, as like a u sub, mm -hmm. right? Where z is like gamma t, then dz is okay. gamma prime dt. 
All right, now let's focus on the second one. And I realized those problems, you are like, you want a short one. Those problems are unfortunately very long, okay? So now what we want to show actually is that this one goes to zero okay. as R goes to infinity. And the best way to do this is to estimate. Okay, yeah. to estimate. Yeah. Okay. So estimate. So put absolute values of this, c squared plus one dz. Now, absolute value of the integral is less than integral of the absolute value. Yes. Easy. And uh, what do you want to say? Uh, yeah, then what you see, we want to show this is smaller than something. So let's show this is bigger than something. Okay. And for this, we have to use what's called the reverse triangle inequality, which says, in other words, absolute value of a minus b is greater or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b. Okay. And so in this case, we get absolute value of z squared minus 1. And this is just absolute value of the absolute value of z squared yes. minus 1. Okay. But look, here is precisely where we need the circle. The circle... Uh, you know, if you have a number on that circle, well, the absolute value is precisely r. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what you're left with, this becomes precisely r squared minus 1. Yes. Technically absolute value, but if r is big, Taking this it, is yeah. positive, right? So in other words, what you're left with is if you take reciprocals now, this integral is less than or equal to integral over c2 of 1 over r squared minus 1 dz. I guess technically absolute value of dz. Someone corrected me in this other video and explain what this absolute value means. Now, this one is just a constant, uh -huh. right? So it drops out. And it was very minimalist blackboard, but. Uh, 1 over r squared minus 1, c2, to an absolute value of dz. But all this means is just the length of your curve. Yes. Okay? And the length of our curve is, you know, 2 pi r divided by 2, which is just... Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, r, the, right? yeah. so this equals to 1 over r squared minus 1, and then pi r. And look, as r goes to infinity... Hey, that's zero. Uh, yeah, precisely. Okay, cool. Precisely, okay? So in other words, this integral becomes trivial as r goes to infinity. Okay. So what have we shown? This complex integral here equals to the integral that we want plus zero. So all we need to do is find this, figure out what this complex integral is. I see. Yeah. And for this, we have something called very beautiful called the residue theorem. Can we always skip that part? Just always. Huh? Can, we, can we always skip this part? No, 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 no. We have to be careful. Like in, in practice, yes. But I can imagine some pathological examples where this wouldn't give you zero or something. Okay. But the idea is actually like you usually choose your contour so that this goes to zero. I don't understand precisely why do you mean by choose your contour. Okay, because the question is why... By the way, I'm not just making this up, I really don't understand. No, 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 I haven't no, done this for a long no, time, uh, yeah. Uh, it's very important though, because I'm not trying to mess around with you. Yeah, yeah. Why did we choose, you know, uh, this semicircle? Yeah. Right? Well, we needed the straight part to get our original integral. Okay. And then it turns out this curvy part, on the curvy part, the function is very small. I see. Right? And that's why if this thing blows up, uh -huh. the integral goes to zero. Can you have chosen a triangle or a square? Um, yes. So if you do this, yeah. I think it would still work, uh -huh. but very much harder to show. You see, because you were on the circle, your absolute value of z equals r. Okay. Otherwise, you would have some very strange parametrization. Okay. And then you would, it would oh, be much okay. harder to show that. Okay, okay, okay. That's why well, circles are usually very good. But the point is, you do have to choose a contour that's really big. Okay. If you chose something like that, like a little line and like this little rectangle, 
chances are this wouldn't quite work. I mean, it probably would work, but it's okay. so complicated. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, how else do you evaluate this integral? There's this beautiful thing called the residue theorem. Because, um, and that's, I think, really interesting. Usually in calculus, you hate where functions are undefined. Yeah. Right? But here we actually love it. Okay. It's the singularities actually help us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because notice, when is this zero? Well, z squared plus one equals zero. That means z squared is minus one. So z is plus or minus i. Yep. Right? So this thing has a singularity at i and at minus i. Yeah. And there's a beautiful theorem called the residue theorem is that if you integrate this function over any contour uh -huh. that encloses your singularity, uh -huh. the answer is just the value of the whole integral, it's 2 pi i mm -hmm. times the residue at z equals i of your function. Oh. See? Like, this is because we have one residue, nice. if you had more, uh -huh. we would have the sum of residues. And then, uh, what is the residue? I believe it's just the, um, how can I say it? Uh, That's, huh? you go ahead. Um, it's a bit complicated, but basically you can expand out this function as a Taylor series, but with reciprocals. Okay. You see, you can write f of z, equals to, I don't know, f of z naught at some point plus some constant over z minus z naught plus some other constant z minus z naught squared, okay. etc. And this Laurent first series, constant, right? huh? Laurent, Laurent series, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And this first constant, this coefficient, it's precisely the residue. Okay. Yeah. So, and it turns out, I believe, there is a formula for it. Let's see, it's, um, oh, I forgot the formula, but. Um, prove it on huh? the spot. Yeah, maybe, let me prove it, yeah, yeah. So I think it's easier. So one over, because, well, first of all, what's the I want to see him prove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One over You're enjoying this, this too, right? This yeah. is awesome, seriously. Plus one, it's one over, I guess, uh, z plus i. Time is best. Minus Freestyle. i, <laughs> sure. <Not> sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one over, so z minus i, and then uh, one over is, mm, I guess, oh, maybe I got it, let's see. Uh, one over, so z plus i is z minus i plus two i. Okay. Okay, and then, this becomes one over z minus i, and let's see. So it's been a long time since I've done that, but uh, <laughs> uh, one over two i, and then one over one plus z minus i over two i. I agree. I'm following. Yes. I agree or two I agree. Two I. Two of us. Two of us. Two of us. <laughs> so, haha. Um, so it's one over z minus i. This one over two i. You can write it as minus i over two. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. This is not ice power. Sorry. Oops. Looks like an ice power. Right. Yeah. So one over z minus i, and then one over two i. You can write it as minus i over two. Multiplying top and bottom by i. Okay. Yeah. I don't like to be on the bottom by m. Uh, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I... <laughs> you do, do not watch my video. Come uh, on. You don't watch my videos, I know now. No, I do, I do. You <laughs> <laughs> didn't get so, a reference, but... <laughs> Okay, so anyway, and then this becomes. So anyway. <laughs> I do watch your videos. Okay, I okay. know, I know. Just okay. play, just play. Alright. Now, again, 1 over 2i, but again, you, you might laugh at this, but this is very useful here, right? You multiply top and bottom by i, so this becomes 1 minus z minus i over 2. Okay, good. And then you use your best friend. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, 1 over z minus i, and then minus i over 2. Wait, I have, I have a question. Yes. So, where did the i from here go? Oh, so remember, 1 over i, it's minus i, mm -hmm. right? 
right? So, oh, uh, oh, I forgot an eye. I was sitting here and I was like looking over and I was like, where did this go? Thank you. That's why it's good to have questions. Okay. So, oh, so it's ma plus and then you change that to a minus yes. and they have the eye. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. And then, so we have minus i over two and then, well, we can still write it as our best friend. Yeah. So yeah. that's one plus, uh, I guess, c minus i over two i, etc., etc. Uh -huh. and squares but it turns out it doesn't matter because you see all those terms will have z minus i and this will cancel out with z minus i here yeah so really the leading term is the laurent series term i see you see so we get minus i over 2 over z minus i uh -huh. plus some high order junk uh-huh right and remember what was the residue <laughs> it's the coefficient of your 1 over z minus i. I see. Right? And therefore, the residue here is minus i over 2. Ah, okay? and we can and just put it here. And therefore, we get, uh -huh, wait for it, 2 pi i times, oh, there's a minus, okay. Hmm. Oh, that works, that works. Yeah, minus yeah. I over oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got so worried. <laughs> <laughs> I got you back. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I need that because sometimes YouTube videos have doubts but like <laughs> minus i squared is one and we get pi and therefore putting it all together yeah we get minus infinity, Whoa. infinity one over t squared plus one d x x x and then x <laughs> it's pi Whoa! Notice, no arc tangent involved or anything. Wow! Yeah. Just the best friend. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. This is how you residue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Amazing. I, I, I got a nod. I, I got a little bit better from from learning that. Good. 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 Yeah, because the last time I had someone teach me contour, yeah, they did not go over how to find the residue or any of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Just they they showed me they showed me the thing of how you did it with the parameterization. Yes. They just skipped over that part to the left of the mm -hmm. unit circle that you did. They mm -hmm. completely skipped over, so I was left out. I was like halfway through, and I was like, okay, well, how do I finish it? Oh no, yeah, it's <laughs> the, that that is the most important part. Of course, there are some formulas I just found out. You can just do, I think, a limit of z minus i of your function mm -hmm. times your function, and I think in the end you still get uh, what was it? Uh, a minus i over two. You wanna show us that real quick? Uh, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So another way, and it's. It's just based on this trick, right? Now, that's a definition of the residue, right? By yes. using the run yes, series. Yes, yes, yes. But there's no, another that's... formula. And if you know this, it's actually just based on this idea. Yeah, this... Because another way of doing this is doing a limit. I think z goes to uh, i. Because right? we are at right. z, okay. z squared plus 1 times z minus i. Oh, okay. okay. Because again, that's that's kind of comes oh, here, right? When you yeah. divide by z minus i, and then that just becomes limit z equals to i of one over z minus i times z plus i. Oh, I remember this from a long time ago. Yep, like, I know. Okay, okay, okay. And then if you let z goes to i, you get one over two i, <sighs> which is minus i over two. Because I don't like to be on the bottom. Exactly. <laughs> that is clever, yeah. I don't like to be on Somebody does watch my video. <laughs> Whoa, so we have we can just put this back there. Yes. Well in fact for this particular one we can just put But by this the way, that, that's because the limit there. exists. Yeah. Thing, otherwise there's some higher order stuff you can do. So I see. My my only question, I understand the Z to I, all of that. Yes. At the very end where it's times Z minus I Yes. Why is it specifically z minus i? Because the, there's a singularity at i. So the singularity defines what you put at the end? Yes, and that z also minus defines whatever. why you take the residue. Okay. Residue is always at the singularity. But as I said, here it simplifies nicely because it's what's called the order one singularity. Right? If you had an order two singularity, you have to do something more complicated, like multiply by z minus i squared or something. Yeah, but sort of probably some derivatives and stuff. Oh, uh, I yeah. see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you, Paya. Oh, you're welcome. For the yeah. freestyle lecture. Yes, and again, if you want to see more math, I have a bunch of complex analysis videos as well on my channel. So you guys, be sure to subscribe to Dr. Woo! Paya. <laughs> and then coming up next, uh, Chester is going to work out yeah. from 0 to infinity dx over x to the force power plus mm. 1. Coming up next. Mm.